Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, Madam Ranking Member. Uh, in a previous uh, career, you know, I had a pretty simple life. Uh, when you're sitting on an airplane and you got a parachute on, the light's red, you don't jump. When the light's green, you do jump. So when I'm sitting here and listening to is that we saw that there was a problem with burdensome regulation back in the 70s. We created an agency or this act, the Regulatory Flexibility Act. And now we come along, we have federal agencies that are not uh, adhering to uh, the analysis or the findings or what have you of this RFA. So my question is, in, in the simple world, you know, what do you think is driving the federal agencies not to adhere to the RFA? I mean, is it belligerence? Is it the fact that they think they are untouchable? I mean, what are the things you, are, you believe uh, is, is causing this, uh, this rub, this recalcitrance? I can start. I'll, I'll just mention from our world, again, the food processing world, uh, kind of what I, I mentioned to Ranking Member Blass was that the certain agencies are, have, a, have a, a focus what they've done well, and then they might also pick up other industries as part of it. Dairy, our world is a specific, and we have specific inspectors now that are, in a lot of cases, former dairy people with good knowledge. They come in, they share the knowledge, which is appreciated. Uh, sometimes when we have other agencies that come in, not just the FDA, but anyone else that might come in to inspect, uh, maybe they, they, they have to, they've been wrapped up because we're food. Uh, maybe it should be more industry specific, and, and the people that do inspect those uh, businesses would have the industry experience. Open to the full panel. Congressman, I, I think that the, uh, as I stated in, in my oral and, uh, and also in my written testimony, is the, uh, the fact that it's, it's, it's easy for agencies to uh, circumvent the RFA and, and just certify that it's, it's inapplicable and really without repercussion. Um, I think it's, at least our case uh, proves that uh, the, the RFA does not today have uh, real teeth and that um, if, it's, if the RFA is viewed as a burden and something to avoid, it, it can be accomplished rather easily. I, I'd, I'd agree with that. Uh, we had some early cases, uh, for instance, where a federal court in Florida had uh, designated a special master to look at the agency's good faith, an agency's good faith in complying with the RFA. I mean, that kind of thing, if you can get to that point, can get you some attention. Um, but that's not an everyday occurrence in litigation. I, I think there's two there's two ways two ways this happens. One is agencies just don't get it. They they really don't get and understand the impacts that their regulations have on small businesses, and so they just proceed. Others have their mission and they don't care. They want to proceed. So you have those two are the two animating factors. I think we most often see. Hey, I don't believe, Mr. West, that it's belligerence. At least I hope that it's not in in the cases that that we've had. But I I do believe that it's it's complete indifference because the the courts have said that the act itself is procedural only. And so why why would an agency devote a lot of resources and and time to to an RFA analysis? I I believe a congressional mandate to put some teeth into the act would would go a long way. And one final question, if I can. If you look at the time period when you first started your business, and if you were to try to go into that endeavor today, do you think that it has become easier, or do you think it, there are more obstacles out there for you to try to uh, create the exact same business that, that you did, you know, 20 or so, however many years ago? Uh, clearly for us, Mr. West, uh, it, uh, it would be almost impossible to start our, our business today. We began in 1954 as a rural telephone cooperative uh, with a handful of farmers and ranchers throwing 50 bucks into the kitty to, to string wires on the poles, uh, largely unregulated. Uh, and, and today we have a, a full finance department, a kind of a mini accounting firm in our own small company. Uh, we have lawyers and economists, a uh, much more complicated uh, industry now, probably impossible to start. I think I'll demur. Um, not, but I will note there are a lot more lawyers now than there were in 1987 when I started. <laughs> uh, I mentioned we probably stuck, look at uh, opening up a store, but taking the leap into the manufacturing uh, now there's so many new things over the past 30 years when we started allergens weren't really on the radar screen that much now it's a huge part of our our industry and our whole production process and the regulations 
that we're we're following now. It's uh, it's a it'd be a daunting task, but we, in our case, starting small, we we took one step at a time, and we'll we'll keep doing that. But it's there are more challenges now, but we we hope to, as evidenced by our membership in International Dairy Foods, and, and just trying to be fully educated, having a quality control director that we can meet all the current regulations. But it is a task. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. 